Welcome back everyone to part 17 in this series of creating scripted REST APIs in ServiceNow. In previous videos, we looked at how we could secure our API with access controls. And in the previous video, we looked at how we could enable OAuth for authentication purposes. But what if there were a way in which we could actually enforce OAuth? In other words, the connections or authentications to our API were only permissible using OAuth, that we would reject all attempts to connect using basic authentication. And what if there were a way in which we could specify specific IP addresses that were permitted to access our API and rejected connections from all other IP addresses? Well, there is a way in ServiceNow using API access policies. And this is part of the adaptive authentication feature in ServiceNow. So let's take a look. The first thing we'll need to ensure is that we have all the necessary plugins activated. The main one is adaptive authentication, but you'll need the OAuth plugin activated already and the authentication profiles plugin as well. But you may find that these three plugins are already activated in your instance. So once they're activated, we'll need to come to API access policies. We'll create a new record here. We'll give it a name, vehicles OAuth. We'll select our API vehicles. Now, one of the great things about this record is that we are able to determine exactly what API or all APIs this access policy will apply to. So if I select global here, it's gonna to apply to all APIs in my instance. If I deselect it, then we leave the vehicles as the API that we've just selected. I can apply this to all methods or a specific method or resources or a specific resource and all versions or a specific version. So if I deselect that one there, let's say we are going to apply this only for version three, because we don't want to disrupt anyone that's still using version one or version two. So let's select that and save the record. So this record, the API access policy is the framework. We actually haven't determined any configuration really to apply to this policy or that are part of this policy. So let's do that now. Let's go to authentication profile, open that up. There are two ones that exist there out of the box already, but we need to create a new one and select this standard option here. We'll give this one a name as well, vehicle authentication profile. We'll give it a description, auth profile for the vehicle's API. Now we're gonna select the type here, OAuth, okay? So this means we're actually gonna enforce OAuth for version three of our vehicle's API. Now we need to reference the OAuth entity. This is the application that we registered in the previous video. So in the previous video, if you haven't already looked at it, take a look at it because in that video, we create an application or register an application where we generate a client ID and a client secret for that application. So which enables that application to then request and get an access token for authentication purposes. So here we need to specify that application here. So in other words, we're going to enforce OAuth for a specific application for a specific version of our API. Now, one little problem here is that this magnifying glass here doesn't work, okay, even though I've saved the record. Um, but you will find if you start typing in this field that the references from that table will pop up. So if we type in uh, VH there, uh, we can see we've got access or reference now to that application that I created in the previous video. So I'll go ahead and select that, update it, and then we'll come back to our access policy record and then just go ahead and select that one and save that, okay? Okay, so let's just review exactly what we have here. We have a new API access policy for version three of our vehicles API, okay? For all methods, all resources in it, okay? We specified that connections to this API, this version three, is only permissible using OAuth for that application that we registered in the previous video. Okay, so that should mean now we can only connect using OAuth and all attempts to connect using basic authentication with a username and password will fail. So if we go ahead and have a look in Postman here, this is the record that we still had up from our previous video. It is an OAuth authentication get request. 
to retrieve a single vehicle from our vehicles table. So if I just don't change anything here and click on send, we've got that record back. That works. We are able to authenticate. The API access policy has permitted us to, or given us authorization to connect to the API and perform that request. Now, let's come back to our basic authentication folder here. I'm going to open up the get vehicle request here. You can see that the authentication type is basic auth. We've got our username and password there. So if I click on send and send that request, we get an error. Okay, we need to provide authorization information. In other words, we need to authenticate using an access token instead. Okay, so that attempt will fail. And that's exactly what we've just defined with that API access policy. If I come back to version two of our API, however, and go to get vehicle, okay? Note that the path here is version two. We haven't defined an access policy for that. We're still using basic authentication in this request. So if I send that request, that will work just as it did before. So we're not disrupting any applications or clients that are still clinging on to the old way of doing things and using basic authentication. Now, one of the great things about adaptive authentication as it applies to APIs and API access policies is that you can go even further to restrict access to your API. So if I come back to my vehicle authentication profile here, and you can see there's a list here called authentication policies. At the moment, we don't have anything. At the moment, we're just enforcing OAuth. But if I were to open this up, there are some out of the box policies there that you can take a look at. But if you click on new here, and just give this a name and save the record. Okay, we will find what other options there are. If we go to policy inputs and click on new, we can see we can restrict this API based on IP address, role and group. So if we select IP filter criteria, it's real easy to do. Specify a single IP address, an IP range, a subnet, from which connections to our API are permissible. So that's how you go ahead and further restrict access to your API using API access policies, which is part of adaptive authentication. This has just been a very quick and simple demonstration here. So there are further resources in the description below, including a course on now learning on adaptive authentication, which goes through this entire feature and includes some exercises that you can perform there as well. So in the next video and the final video in our little section here on security, we're going to look at authentication scopes, which is part of the OAuth 2.0 specification. And we're going to tighten the screws one more time to restrict access to our API based on what access token you have. So hang around for that one.